And Corey Mills, Congressman, good morning. Good to have you on this Tuesday. Um, first question about the bill. Does this have a chance at passing in the House? Well, I don't believe it does, and that's thankful to uh, Speaker Mike Johnson, who said he's not going to even bring it to the floor. So uh, I am hopeful this is dead on arrival. I think that the Senate's priorities um, are certainly not on America first. They're more on trying to secure everyone else's borders to include Ukraine's, which we've already seen has got widespread corruption. And meanwhile, prolonging a war that's actually costing more lives. And we've got 8.5 million people who are coming across our border, 1.8 million in gotaways, over 230 different nations who have crossed, 200 plus terrorists or uh, individuals who are on terrorist watch lists. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. And you got Mayorkas, who has even said multiple times that our borders are, are secured and closed, which clearly are not. So uh, I think this Senate bill is dead in the House. I don't think Speaker Johnson is going to bring it to the floor for a vote, but we are going to have a second bite at the apple when it comes to looking at how we secure our borders, because the H.R. 2, which is Secure the Border Act, has been sitting with the Senate for nearly a year now. And they've refused to take it up. And what they're doing is they're prioritizing Ukraine over America. Well, I'm sorry. I was elected by the American people. That's who I represent. That's who I protect. And that's what my priority is. Yeah, Senator J.D. Vance brought up some text buried in the bill that requires funding for Ukraine well into the next presidential term. So Trump has made his stance on Ukraine aid very clear. Senator Vance calling it, quote, impeachment time bomb. Do you agree? I do indeed. And Senator Vance has done a great job of continuing to hold the line, which is not easy. Obviously, he doesn't have the votes. Uh, to go ahead and push that through on his own. But I know that he stands for America first. Uh, he's right that this would absolutely try and mandate funding to Ukraine, which is something that no American, as you've seen, it's even in most polls, you see it's a unpopular favored thing when it comes to trying to continue support to Ukraine when it comes to finances. Look, we're at $34 trillion in deficit. Next year, we're looking at over $900 billion just in interest service payments. That is the equivalent of the entire national defense budget for the United States. We have to start prioritizing at home. We have to start looking at robust military. We have to start looking at securing our border. We have to start looking at economic right. growth strategies and getting back to energy independence. And we can't do that if our focus and priority is on securing Ukraine. Can you tell me what happens or what you would expect to happen if this bill is in fact dead on arrival in the House? Do you think the House carves out, you know, I know a week ago, Mike Johnson said, all right, how about an Israel only bill mm -hmm. and a Ukraine only bill? Do you think something like that could happen? Well, I think that is something that he had stated very early on whenever he was elected speaker is to try and have standalone individual foreign aid. But what I feel right now is that we don't need to be thinking about any foreign aid. We need to be thinking about America. We need to be thinking about our southern borders. We need to be thinking about the prioritization of freedoms, liberties, and safety of our American citizens. And so we can't do that when we're continuing to have these foreign aid battles back and forth. And I must mention that Senator Rubio in 2018 passed a bill that guarantees $3.8 billion a year automatic uh, uh, renewals for Israel right. with regards to the Iron Dome and other things. So there, there's more than, than enough in the state and foreign ops package that has already passed. And I don't think that our priorities need to be focused on foreign aid, but on U.S. and local domestic product. Yeah, and as you know, the House expected to vote for a second time on DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas' impeachment later today. Steve Scalise is back after being treated for cancer. Do you pass this today? Well, I'm really excited to see that uh, Steve is back. Um, prayers answered for a lot of us who wanted to make sure that he got back safely. But uh, yes, I do think that there is discussion that the bill could even come to the floor today. Uh, this is a bill that I helped to co-sponsor as well as for many others with Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, so that we could look at the impeachment of Mayorkas, his failures in upholding his constitutional oath, the failures to try and continue to protect and preserve America's sovereignty. And so I do see this going to the floor, and I'm hopeful that even some of those who had voted no before can see the light and actually come and understand that this is holding accountability, which is what American people have been asking for. Yes, could be a historic mm -hmm. day on Capitol Hill today, Congressman. Over your right shoulder, I spy a <laughs> Christmas tree. And I like that about you because I keep mine up Year late round? into the <laughs> winter as well. Well, he's in Florida, so you got to right. have keep it up. Well, right? I'm actually up in D.C. Well, you're in moment, Washington, so. so keep it up. <laughs> I, I, I Unfortunately, I don't spend as much time up here as I do back home, so I haven't had a chance to take it down. But yes, it is still there. You don't have to make excuses. Great. Congressman, great. mine is up too. All right, you keep it up all winter. Good to see you, sir. Thank you.